Cyclones and cyclones. Uh, the kind of impetus from this came from the stage, actually, the Sunday papers. Uh, Susan Gerbic, I think that she's an alum of the Sunday papers, and she's talked about uh, real skepticism. Today, we're going to hear from Rob Palmer. So he's got a degree in mechanical engineering. He designs spacecraft. But what he likes to do is help with the guerrilla skeptics, and he's going to give us an insider's tale on what that's like. So let's welcome to the stage one. First off, thank you very much for accepting my paper, obviously, and uh, thank you very much for making me follow something about drug, sex, and rock and roll. <laughs> so. So, actually, that's my audio test, because I have a few audios in here, and I didn't hear anything. So let's check it. Yeah. no audio there. It's better with the audio, but that's pretty cool anyway. <laughs> so as a mechanical design engineer who worked on spacecraft, we put them on top of rockets to go up. You know, I dreamed to work on something like that, but I never got to work for SpaceX. See, it's better with the audio. Okay. Okay, so uh, no one asked me but um, water, then toothpaste, and then I brush. And, and by the way, very hot water for a long time because, like, you know, germ theory of disease people. No one made, I couldn't believe some people didn't even use water. That's crazy. Okay, so I am glad to see so many people stay. I had a nightmare that no one was going to be here at all. So that's, that's really cool. Um, by a show of hands, how many know nothing about this subject? Or maybe just you knew the name, but not much. Okay, so there's some people in the audience, that's good. But this is targeted to people who, it's kind of in the middle. It's going to give you a very quick overview of what we do. And it's also going to, uh, you know, give people who know something about it perhaps some more information than they've ever heard before. So my other goal, besides instructing you on this, is hopefully to get, if there's any skeptical couch potatoes, like I was two years ago, just listening to podcasts, reading the books, like, yeah, I wish I could do something, and I didn't know what to do. Well, this is the thing you can do. So, um, oh, by the way, the founder of our organization is actually in the audience. Uh, Susan Gerbic is here. I don't Decided to advertise for the organization. The gorilla doesn't wear a business suit. No, no, the kinesio tape. Oh, okay. Because it works. That. Because it works, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. That was smooth. Okay, so that, that was my introduction initially, and that doesn't matter regarding what I do now, because I, well, I did one thing on space, uh, a cat, Felicis, but mostly I do pseudoscience and alt-med and fight with Paltrow. Um, as a teen, I believed in Wu, then I found a skeptical inquiry, that's a story I hear a lot. And it took me a long time between when I was a teen and when I actually discovered there's a skeptical movement and people do things. And mostly when I started to listen to podcasts, because I'm um, an engineer interested in astronomy, I looked up universe and I got the skeptic sky. Oh, what is this? It's fantastic. So then it took me not too long, a couple more years, and then I found out that, hey, this is this thing called the Gorilla Skeptics. Because I heard it on the Skeptic Zone from Australia, Richard Saunders played, uh, I think it was an interview with Susan. And I joined quickly and became a skeptical activist. Actually, I got lucky because I wrote a paper on the, on the GSOW, which is what we call Real Skeptics, by the way. And I sent it in to um, Barry Carr, and they published it, and they liked it so much, I have a column now. So that, that's, and that's all through the Real Skeptics. It would have happened if I hadn't joined them. All right, so Wikipedia. So, some people don't, who are not multilingual don't realize it, but a lot of the articles you can click on the left side and see the other language versions of the article. It's not a direct translation. Every one of them is done by someone. Now, sometimes it's somebody on our team. English is by far the language which it has the most. But why do we even care? Why do we do this on Wikipedia? Well, these are the most heavily trafficked websites in English, in order. Google, that's no, you know, no surprise. Then you get YouTube, then you get Facebook. 
None of those are bastions of knowledge all on their own. And then you get Wikipedia. So that's why we do it. And Google points to Wikipedia. And in fact, sometimes Facebook points to Wikipedia. So. And another reason is that journalists use it for their stories. So we actually luckily found an exa example. Uh, Mike Jurassic, who's in the audience, is one of our editors. And he's a fighter. And he reads USA Sports. And he found this article quite just accidentally. Ronda Rousey, who's a, who's a woman fighter, was, inter was interviewed, and then they wrote an article about it. She sat down for Tyler Henry, the guy who speaks to you know, the dead relatives of the Hollywood famous. So he has his own show. It's been on for three years. So mostly people, when this happens, a Kardashian sit with Tyler Henry, you get a puff piece. In this case, it wasn't quite a puff piece. This journalist somehow found out that, hey, people have called Tyler Henry a grief vampire, and that the IIG, our organization, awarded him the truly terrible television award. Well, where did he find that? Let's look at the Wikipedia article for Tyler Henry. Ooh, look, the same thing's right up there. Isn't that a coincidence? Let's scroll down a little bit. What do we get here? Three times on the page, Greek vampire. The girl of skeptics added all that information. So that's why that runs up in USA Today, rather than being a puff piece. Okay, another reason that Wikipedia is important is because Michael Scott really loves it. Wikipedia. <laughs> Is the best thing ever. <laughs> Anyone in the world can write anything they want about any subject. So you know you are getting the best possible information. <laughs> so, so that was said early on in the series when you might have been right, sarcastically, because, you know, they let anybody hold attention. In, in the years it's been around, there are now bots which go and they take vandalism off instantaneously. There are experienced editors. If you publish a page, they get a flag of that and read it. So, and our group, as well as other people who are editors, concentrate on the, the pages that are important. Not so much the plot of a movie, that's probably still hit or miss. But if you go to a science page or something on pseudoscientist skepticism, it's much more likely to be correct. So now we're going to talk about what our team specifically has done. So what are we? We're international. That's a, that's a, a big thing. And, and therefore, we actually work in many, many languages all around the world. And we don't take a dime from anybody, despite what people say about being a shill for Monsanto, et cetera. <laughs> and I can guarantee you, my bank account is not going up doing this. We're all well trained by the aforementioned Susan Garbett. She still handles the training herself. And that's our goal right there. And there's a sub-goal. Eradicate all the woo on the encyclopedia. Of course, that's not going to happen. But we try our best. And like I, I like to say, we fight the forces of the dark side. And that's people who do believe in the other side and believe the encyclopedia should be fair and balanced for pseudoscience and old men, etc. Um, anyone can edit Wikipedia even without an account. Not everyone knows that. So anyone who's reading it who believes in anything that they saw Bigfoot or they were followed home by UFO, ha do go and put that on there. And, and we and other editors have to take that off. We have the skills, we know how to do this right, so we don't get our edits reversed. It's called reverse. And the fact that Wikipedia is on our side helps. This is Wikipedia's position on fringe material. The articles have to reflect the current mainstream consensus. You can have an alternate scientific point of view if there's, if there's indecision in science. But the most important point, and I have to post that a lot of times on the talk pages when I'm arguing with other editors who want to tell me about their, their you know, trip up into space on a UFO. It, you do not have to be fair and balanced regarding pseudoscience. So let's get some specifics here. These are three articles that I, I personally wrote in the last couple of years. Photo Arc is about animal extinction across the planet. It's a National Geographic project. There was no, um, there was no Wikipedia article. I happened to see an exhibit, it's a traveling exhibit. I was so impressed. Oh, how is there no Wikipedia page? So now there is. Um, I heard this gentleman, Bob Nygaard, being talked, interviewed on skepticality by Derek. He's the one and only detective who prosecutes psychics and gets clients money back. Three million dollars or so in eight years. It's quite astounding. I, I made him mark. That's the bottom. And then, by the way, I have an interview with him from Skeptical Inquirer. There's a two-part interview with him. You should look that up. It's really cool. And that's Skeptical Inquirer online, so you can get it. And then, last year, I saw the Science Moms documentary screen right here. Well, no. Up the strip at Excalibur. But that was the US premiere of Science Moms. And again, there, there was no Wikipedia article. I, I worked with, uh, with Kevin and Natalie Newell, and I, and I made them an article. 
And by the way, that's gotten something like 23,000 views since I made those three articles together. They're not the highest numbers, but that's pretty good. Okay, so besides writing brand new articles, one of the other things we do is we take existing articles that really don't reflect science or criticism correctly, and we fix them. Monica the Medium is a little sister, I'd say, of Tyra Henry. She, I think she's a high school girl. She's followed around by cameras because she talks to dead people in the school cafeteria. So this is the previous version of the article. And basically, it just talks about the show. You know, it's on ABC Family, and this is how many seasons it's had, these are what happens in the episodes. Well, this is what we did to it now. Now it says it's paranormal, and that part above the table of contents with a big box around it, that's called the lead. That's supposed to be a summary of what's in the entire rest of the article. And as you can see, the table of contents peeking out from the bottom where it says critical reception. I edited that section, and now it has the information that's just summarized above it. And more than half the lead is now a criticism, which basically says, you know, this is bold. <laughs> that got somebody at work very pissed, by the way, because she said, I don't believe in Tyler Henry, but Monica's real. So then I did this and showed it to her. <laughs> that's a good part of being part of this team. You can do that. Okay. Susan asked about my elastic <laughs> therapy tape. Somebody else at work was talking it up. He heard someone else talking it about, oh yeah, it, it cures you know, anything you could think of regarding skeletal structure or muscles just by stripping it. We're not talking about compression or anything. And by the way, CVS sells the, the, the damn thing. Not, not only the version that the company makes, but they actually went and made their own product, which is what this is. And so you've heard about the lawsuit we have against CVS. So this is the previous version of the article. It was a little bit nebulous. You, you could read this either way. But then, when I got to it, I slapped the ultimate banner on the right side, put a, an effectiveness section, which basically says it's pseudoscience and summarizes that belief. And so, actually, I, I told the person at work, hey, go read Wikipedia on this. And then he had a different opinion from what his friend said. <coughs> and the good thing is, well, so many people read these things, it's not just to convince my friend, obviously. So, by the way, that, you don't have to read that, but that's the effectiveness section. And it has critiques from Stephen Novella and, um, and from Skeptoid. So, you know, we can't write whatever we want. You have to get well-researched um, publications and, and use them as sources, and that's what we do. So why does it matter? Uh, because 318,000 plus people look at this page every year, at least last year. And the spikes are from whenever there's a major sporting thing starting up, the World Series, maybe that too, or a new season of, of football, and certainly the Olympics. Everyone goes, just by the way, I walked outside with this and I saw so many people looking at me. I was wondering if they're going, is he crazy or, oh, I should go buy some of that. So, <laughs> it might be I should have done that. There's another article, this is one of, our, one of our big hits, the Blue Whale Game. I don't know if you've heard of this, anyone hear of this? Okay, this, that's surprising that no one heard of it, and I'll show you why in a minute. But this is the original version of it. It basically says young children, teens, are killing themselves because of a social media game. That challenges them to do things, it gets more and more difficult. And then, suicide is the last thing. So, this article is full of gossip, basically. We went and restructured it. I did not work in this page. Other people from GSOW did. And basically now, if a mother is worried that, that they found on their daughter's mirror a picture of a blue whale, which is one of the claims, by the way, that that indicated that they were playing the game, she's not going to kill herself because this is an urban legend. And now that's it. So why does that matter? Uh, 10 million, 378,000 and so in one year. I've, I've read this, just the English version of it. So now, from the point we worked on it, you know, people will not ne unnecessarily worry. All right, so I showed you pages created from scratch, as well as pages that we totally did. But probably the bigger things we do are the smaller changes. We go to an article, it's got criticism in it, but the lead doesn't say that. So we'll, we'll summarize that in the lead. We add wiki links, which point from one article to another. We add pseudoscience and ultimate banners, like I showed you. I didn't show you a citation needed, but on a sentence or a paragraph, you could say, this might be okay, but we need a, a, a citation. And then that triggers the system to, to put it in a file that people can look at to try to improve it. If there's something egregiously wrong, we remove the invalid contents. And, of course, as I said, we add the skeptical content and that sort of thing. One thing was um, the incident where James Ramsey helped Johnny Carson unmask Geller on The Tonight Show. That was, that I found out about that. That wasn't about anything that I could find in Wikipedia. And I added the same information to four Wikipedia pages. So, so that's, that's quite a hit. So, and, and those get milli millions, millions of people read those four pages collectively in a year. So now, now they can see that story. 
And uh, as a real, if we find an article which is really off, especially if it's a psychic or some self-promotional thing, we can recommend the article deletion, and it gets voted for by Wikipedia uh, editors. So to put this in context, how large is GSOW? Well, as I said, anyone can track can edit without an account, so we don't know what that number is. But there are 34 million people with accounts. That's pretty big. But only 130,000 only are frequent editors. Wikipedia says that once a month they call that frequent. Not, not huge, but still a big number when you compare it to, we have about 100 people. A little more than that, some are in training aren't really working yet. Um, so we are definitely a small fish in the huge ocean, but we do make a difference. So I can't just say that to a skeptic organization, I have to give you some facts <laughs> to back that up. So what is our impact? Okay, so to put this in context, we've been in operation for eight years, founded by Susan Garbick, starting with a few people, and ramped up not quite exponentially, maybe literally, but so you have to take that, keep that in mind when you see the numbers. Uh, right now, they said 100 editors or so. Uh, what's the what's the number on the Susan? It goes up every day. 707. 707 now articles in many languages. Those are ones that again from scratch or greatly improved, not the little minor changes. Those might be two orders of magnitude larger than that number. And right now, 1.1 million every month people look at that. Though just those 700 articles. And collectively, that boggles my mind. <laughs> All right, so that's the team. So why personally do I do this? Well, I feel I'm, I, well, I'm, a, I'm a contributor to that number there. So I, I do feel I'm, I'm helping to make the world a little bit more rational. Um, it reduces my frustration because, of course, previously I could only argue with friends and bang my head against the wall because no one would ever listen and change their mind and read anything. And, and that probably, you know, registers with a lot of people. And it gives me a sense of accomplishment. And so, specifically, my stats, in the two years I've been working, um, a Yankee Stadium full of people every month read my, only my 17 articles, not counting my thousands of other changes, perhaps. And total page views for me, a little over a million Woo! in two years. So, one thing would be, and it broke again. <laughs> How do I fix this? Thank you. Yeah, these buttons too close together, I don't know. Went too far. Okay, so the question would be, well now you see how it's important, maybe I'll just jump on and do it myself. That's difficult. The details of editing are quite daunting. I tried it before I, went, I met this group. Not about skepticism, I was just trying to change Star Trek the experience, which was at this hotel. Because <laughs> the, the, the write-up was wrong, and I worked hours and hours and hours, and it was gone the next day. And I put it back and it was gone, and I didn't know what to do, and I didn't touch the, the editing. I didn't edit Wikipedia again for, I think it was five years. It's, it's difficult. There are rules and guidelines. There are editors who know what they're doing, and they'll, they'll step on you if you make the smallest mistake. You can get into conflict with them if you keep taking their stuff off. They can like block your account. So going alone on this is very difficult. You can try it, but it, it's difficult. So the thing about this team is we provide the training and the mentoring to give you the knowledge and the support. You go into a Facebook group immediately when you're training. It's not even after you've graduated. Everyone helps you. So Pitch is here. We need you. Um, we have a table in the back, and we'll have business cards. You can talk to Susan, myself, or the other editors. There's quite a number in the room. You can look us up at this URL. Um, that, that's our email. And we actually have a promo. You can search on YouTube for Real Skeptics promo, and you'll find it. Do I have a talk to play one minute? Okay. So we actually created an audio which was played on the European Skeptics podcast as well as the Skeptic Zone. It's about a minute long. I am going to play it for you. Reliable 
provide scientific and skeptical information to the world's number one source of information, Wikipedia. We write new articles and improve existing ones. We remove pseudoscience, paranormal, and old men claims, substituting the actual facts, and we operate in many languages. We've already reached tens of millions of people searching for information, but as you can imagine, we can never do enough. So please join us. All you need is a PC, a Facebook account, and a desire to help educate the planet. In fact, you'll be educated in the world while you sleep. Contact us at gsowt at gmail.com. Guerrilla skepticism. The time is now. Music by PurplePlanet.com. And thank you very much for your attention.